Recently, I modified this Erica synth baseline DIY voice. If you want to know why and about the approach, welcome to my new video. Hi there! Baseline DIY by Erica Synth is a bass voice with versatile sound design options. But I need to tweak it a bit because the VCA Attack Decay envelope would not follow the duration of incoming gate signals. Long lasting notes or syncopated bass lines are not available out of the box. As a workaround, you can drone the voice by turning the VCA knob fully clockwise. Spotting another VCA and envelope generator, finally, baseline would properly respond to the gate accordingly. Thanks to Erika though, comprehensive schematics of the module, among others, have been made available on GitHub. Let's dive in and take a closer look if we can tweak the module's envelope generators and free the external modules for different tasks. Looking at the input side of the schematic, the gate signal is routed through some protection circuit against overvoltage, reverse polarity, static discharge and so on and finally received by this op-amp comparator circuit. With a voltage divider connected to 12V, the negative input pin is fixed at about 108V. That is, as long as the gate is low, the op-amp will produce its lowest negative voltage, which is about minus 10 something volts. With a high input, that is at least more than 1.8V, the op-amp will jump up to its maximum output voltage, which is about 11 something volts. The TL07 series cannot do rail-to-rail, -rail. this is why supply voltage levels are never reached at the output. However, let's simply use the terms high and low from now on, as the actual levels are not that crucial for our analysis here. The output is sent to this gate label and received by this circuit on the right side. In case of a low signal, diode VD11 prevents current from flowing, basically holding the voltage at the transistor base of VT4 at ground. VT4 is in common emitter configuration. When the input is low, the output is high and vice versa. In consequence, resistor R85, the diode and capacitor C37 are kept high. This way, transistor VT3 is fully activated, providing an additional route for capacitor C40 to fully discharge. On the other hand, transistor VT6 is completely closed, as no voltage difference is applied to resistor divider R91 and R87, they are all at the same high level. Now, when the gate goes high, the voltage divider at the base of transistor VT4 will activate the transistor and pull its collector close to ground. As long as the gate stays high, the transistor VT3 will close and not allow any further current to bleed from capacitor C40. Transistor VT6, on the other hand, will immediately open as current starts to flow via R91 and R87, charging up control capacitor C37. All this produces a steep attack rise on C40, which is basically representing the VCF envelope voltage. As the voltage continues to rise on control capacitor C37, the voltage across R91 will get smaller and smaller, closing transistor VT6 over time. This is when capacitor C40 reaches its peak output level. From now on, as long as the gate is kept high, C40 will start to discharge again via R90 and the VCF decay slope control potentiometer connected to ground. By the way, op-amp DA7B is just acting as a buffer for impedance conversion and reproduction of voltage levels at the positive input. Once the gate signal goes low, control transistor VT4 will go high again, bringing the overall circuit back into initial state. The right-hand voltage at control capacitor C37 will shortly double, but immediately be discharged via diode VD17. Though it's hard to see at first glance, 
If we look close enough, the lower part of the circuit dedicated to the VCA envelope is just a replication of the VCF circuit. VT5 corresponds to VT6 and its voltage divider resistors. VT1 is equivalent to VT3, output capacitor C36 to C40 and so on and so forth. The only difference I would encounter is R70 with 56K in the VCA circuit, whereas R89 is 33K only, giving the VCF circuit a little faster discharge time when the gate is released. All this may be a little easier to understand when seeing in action. Here I built the envelope circuit in Falstad Simulator to take a closer look what's going on. The upper section again generates the VCF envelope, whereas the lower section is the VCA circuit. Releasing the gate in the middle of the decay phase, the additional count drain across VT1 and VT3 are noticeable. Using the sliders we can adapt the decay phase of each generator individually. With the circuits rearranged, their similarity becomes even more obvious. Now, how can we hold the VCA envelope up with the gate and convert its behavior into a tech release instead of a tech decay? Easy! Watch the collector node on VT4 and how it stays low with the gate. So what about if we simply connect this control input for VCA envelope with the collector side Okay, that does not seem to do the deal for us. There's still a little issue, but that's easy to fix. Um, we have a little current flowing, which is opening this transistor here. And in order to close it in the normal state, we simply have to lower its amount by a little. See in the lower left corner how the voltage is going down and I figured 10k, at least in the simulator, would do the job. Now the VCA stays open while the VCF envelope goes down again as before and upon gate release the VCA is going to close again. And that's exactly what we want. Perfect. Back to the schematic again and just for orientation, we are going to cut the connection of R86 and pull it over to this node here. Plus, we may need to replace the value of this resistor R88 for proper operation. Before applying any modifications to the module, I want to document the original envelope behaviors. The additional current drain across VT1 and VT3 respectively are again very good to see. The magenta trace is the VCF envelope, yellow trace is the VCA envelope. As expected with the potentiometers fully clockwise, the smaller discharge resistor on the VCF side leads to a little faster discharge time. To dismount the PCB sandwich, only one screw has to be removed. Gently pull on both sides to disconnect the headers.
This area around the TL072 op amp is responsible for envelope generation. This is R88 and this is R86. As a first step, we will remove both of them. R88 is then replaced with a new 10K resistor and soldered from the backside. To connect R86 with the collector side of VT4, I noticed that Erika has added this test point TP12 as a plated through hole to the board. Lucky us, the test point is in reach for the long leg of the resistor. We can reuse the original component in this case. Now we can assemble the PCB sandwich again and mount the screw back in place. Testing the envelope outputs again, the modification led exactly to anticipated behaviors. Beauty! If you have made it this far, throughout the video you have listened to the modified baseline voice jamming some random patterns. Its sound was recorded straight to the mixer without additional effects, together with a few arbitrary drum patterns. If you enjoyed this type of content, write my day and drop me a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching!